Hello, I'm Yvette, and I am with the man, Ben, from the Welcome Project. Ben, thank you for joining us at this table where we are sharing stories about the connections that our guests have with Somerville. Yeah, so I'm Ben Echevarria. I'm the executive director of the Welcome Project, born and raised here in Somerville. Um, so my whole life has been here with the exception of college and a few things okay. like that. But um, definitely love my city and it's always been my city. Well, what changes have you seen? And tell me a bit of, a little bit about the good changes and the not so good changes. Well, I think I've, you know, I've seen quite a bit in this city. Um, I remember when the old movie theater, the old AMC Lowell's was in existence. Now it's knocked down and gone. It's just a parking lot over at Assembly Row. Um, I've been here through quite a bit of the changes. I remember when Davis Square itself was, honestly, it was, you know, just a place that nobody really knew about. And, um, you know, you had the Social Security office, you had a Dunkin' Donuts, you had a McDonald's, and that was pretty much it. And a bunch of, like, little small store shops, but for the most part, you know, these offices that nobody really knew what, were, what they were. And, you know, you can get in and out of the square in three minutes driving. Oh, right, driving. Oh, uh, so, so those are some of the changes now. Have there, are there, have those, any of these changes been good or been positive for the people of, of Somerville? I think there have been some great positive changes. I think, you know, the city itself has embraced people more. Um, you know, growing up, it's been very tough to, to actually be part of a community you never felt a part of. Whereas now it's sort of like I feel much more connected to the city than I ever did growing up. Um, I don't know if that's you know by age or just changes in people and philosophies. Um, I also feel like um, as as much as I don't like the developers, but Assembly Row in itself is a good thing. Um, I you know I remember as a kid, you know, and I'll, I'll admit it on camera now that I'm old enough, <laughs> drinking at the parks in the back. And, you know, and it was so isolated because all you had were the lumber yards and the green line and everyone left you alone. Now it's just like there was nothing there. Now to have actually a vibrant community in itself, mm -hmm. um, I think is a wonderful thing. I think, you know, I wish it was more connected to the city itself, but it's, you know, it's, it's great for the city. I think um, so many people I talk about, that's what they talk about is, you know, oh, Assembly Road, blah, blah, blah. So that to me is a little exciting to be able to be able to say, yeah, that's where I live. Yes, Somerville is that type of place. I moved here in 1996, oh, 1995, and I've seen changes. But, you know, you mentioned something about how feeling welcome, and, you know, that definitely takes me to where you are mm -hmm. contributing right now, and that is with the Welcome Project. So share a little bit about the Welcome Project. Sure. We're a 30-year-old organization this year, and we started in uh, 1987 straight out of a court order that forced integration in the housing developments. Uh, one of the big stories of Somerville that many people um, don't really understand was Somerville used to be a very white, Irish, Italian, Catholic city and weren't so friendly to people. And, you know, that was sort of the summer that I grew up in. And as, as the city started to change, immigrants were facing a lot of problems in the city, uh, from discrimination to, you know, f flat out hate crimes to a lot of different things. And the other part was they didn't know how to assimilate. So one of the big things that we work on is not just ensuring that immigrants' voices are heard in the community, but also how can immigrants be part of the community. Mm -hmm. So we are always trying to add a little extra va added value. We try to work on cultural pieces, you know, understanding how each culture works. And, you know, I think we change for the better when we all understand where everyone comes from. Oh, yes, I do. I just think that... Um it's important to have an organization like yours. And I, and I do want more people to be more aware of the Welcome Project that is located right here in Somerville, Massachusetts, in East Somerville. We're, the, we're, at, we're in the Mystic Housing Development. Mystic Housing Development. And, and to me, it's such a special thing. And I've invited them to be part of the Hip Hop Festival. That's right. To, watch, to welcome the, our guests to Somerville. It's yeah. awesome. I'm excited about the hip hop festival. I'm going to tell you this right now. I think it's about time we, we start showing the talents that so many of our kids bring. Um, you know, I think we need to actually move it forward and really, you know, let's let's get it back at what it is. It's it's art. It's art. 
and I want to highlight that cultural art piece and I want to highlight the beauty that these kids bring and the thoughtful words that yes. they're putting to rhyme and music. I'm really excited for this project. It's, to me, it's like a, a tapestry where you have oh, all of this one. thread that's interweaved between all these different communities. And it's the same, you know, they have the same core beliefs and it's exciting to give them a platform and for uh, partnering with the Welcome Project to bring this important piece of art to Somerville. Yeah, I'm excited for it. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, thank for you. everything you do. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Actually, okay, this is actually my story. So I have a really strange mix. So I'm Chilean, but I'm also British. So my dad's born in Liverpool. My mom's from South America. And I think that this is crazy because people are always like, oh, soulmates, like how are you gonna meet your soulmate, right? Uh, so apparently my dad had to travel like three continents to find his soulmate. So. Uh, my dad traveled the world a bunch, and then finally he went to South America. Well, he moved to New York, so Brit in New York, moved to New York, was working there. They sent him down to South America to uh, work on some sort of project. There he met my mom's uncle, and my mom's uncle, um, at one point, he was supposed to show him around on like one of the weekends, and he was like, something came up, can you do it? So my mom was like, fine. At the time, she wanted to leave South America anyway, because she had just been like done with it. And she was thinking of going to France, because she also speaks French and she speaks Spanish, so she was thinking of going to either France or Spain. And then at some point, I guess my dad coerced her. He was like, oh, you should come study in the US. And like, because she's a dentist, so he was like, come study in the US. And she's like, okay, like I'll think about it. So they pen paled for a year after he left. And then he like convinced her to come, would do all the paperwork for her to come to the US and study. So she did that. She came and lived, um, he actually, she says this, and I was like skeptical about it at first, but now I actually believe her, where he was like, you could stay in my apartment, I'll go stay with one of my friends. And he had a relationship with that friend that was like, he would do that. He was just like very, very generous. They were both generous with each other. Yeah. So uh, he stayed with her supposedly. And then, or he stayed with the friend, my mom stayed in his apartment. And then at some point, like four months into this, uh, all his friends are like, are you going to propose to her? And he was like, yeah, okay. So one of his friends was like, I will pay for your wedding if you propose. Because at this point, he was like 40-something, and they were like convinced he was never going to get married. So he goes to City Hall and marries my mom. Um, they're, they've had a great relationship, which is so weird, because if I did this, my mom would kill me. If I went to a whole other country and met a stranger and was like, okay, I'm getting married, never coming back, which is exactly what she did. So. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, but she knew what she was doing. Apparently nobody else knows what they're doing. So, uh, yeah, so she marries my dad, and they've been together ever since, and had my sister, and then they had me, and it's kind of interesting, because I'm like, wow, the idea of two people meeting each other and, like, the existence of myself or my sister is, like, very coincidental. Like, what are the odds of that happening? So, but, yeah, that's my favorite story, because we're so mixed, and I feel like that's, like, the U.S. <laughs> So my name is Todd Kaplan mm -hmm. and I've only been in Somerville since 1986. Okay. What's your name? My name is Henry Parker. And how long have you been in Somerville? Well, I was born here in Somerville. My family was the third black family ever to move to Somerville. My uncle used to be the principal for Western Junior High School, which is now Texas I know where that is. Yep. They, yep, mm -hmm. yep. So, you're, so you said your uncle was. What yes. was his name? David Jones. Wow. And was he also... In, from Somerville? Exactly. Wow, wow. So, um, do you mind me asking how old you are? 67. 67. Black don't crack. <laughs> and where, where, when you were, where was the first house you lived in Somerville? Still there. Where's that, what's that? Third, Cameron Avenue. On Cameron Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us what it was like to grow up in Somerville in that time. Okay, uh, at that time, I had Moving back, I had lived a year in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Then, and I how long? How old were you at that time? Uh, I was like in grammar school. Okay. Then I so. went to. We moved. My family. We moved to Detroit. Uh -huh. Then we came back here. Now at that time, I was in junior high school, so I went through junior high and high school. So I've seen some of them go through some changes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, back then, it was quote unquote the all American city. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well. That's a good question. Very good question. That's what they called it. Uh -huh. Back in, in that time, uh, some of it was 
99 and 9 tenths percent Irish and Italian. Not till about 1983, and around that era, that time when the red line came in, mm -hmm. that's when it started to become more diverse with uh, influx of Haitians and uh, Salvadorians or Salvadorians. And um, just to go back when it was, you said something like 99 percent Irish and Italian. Irish and Italian. What was it like being African American that time? It didn't bother me whatsoever. When I graduated from high school, out of 500 students. There were only three blacks. Mm -hmm. When my cousin graduated a few years before me, mm -hmm. uh, out of 900, he was the only black, wow. and so forth. Mm -hmm. They never had more than three. Uh -huh. But it was no, no biggie. No one no, treated no. you any different. No, no. That's great. And so, what did you end up doing after um, high school? After uh, graduating? Okay, I went off to college mm -hmm. in St. Augustine's in Raleigh, North Carolina, for a couple of years, Sorry about that. Sorry about and then. That. Uh, <laughs> do it or whatever, I moved back here, and I've been here ever since. Wow. But mm -hmm. I, I educate myself through travel. And do you have married and kids here? Just me. Just you, wow, wow. And so you're still in the same house, yep. and uh, you have siblings? No. No. Just my, mo my mother still resides in the same house. Oh, wow. She just turned 98, and my, oh, my aunt, God. Oh, my she's God. in her 90s. She lives downstairs. Okay, so is it a two or three family? Two family. Two family. And so this is really multi-generational Exactly. And uh, so you, um, I spoke to you, you have a big job taking care of your mom. She gets around. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And where, where, where was your mom grew up? Where did she grow up? Cameron Avenue. Same house. Same house. Wow, 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 wow. So as you've seen Somerville change, and you said it around the early 80s things started to change, what, what have you noticed? Well, diversity is such noticeable, noticeable diversity. Uh, with the raise in property values and rents, it's starting to reverse itself. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. I think that's... And also, um, we're seeing, I guess, the demographics of a lot of young people as well. Yeah, mm, that's fine. If they can afford to live here, why not? Like, they, no, they talk about diversity, yeah. and they pat themselves on the back, but if you don't have uh, political representation, mm -hmm. you're just blowing smoke. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the political representation in Somerville? Do you think that, uh, do you feel represented? Mm -hmm. Well, they have a few, uh, Andre Green. Yeah. Uh, ben, what's his, Ben E, I forget his name. Well, Andre's on the school committee, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. but as long as you have a voice, mm -hmm. you're all right. It's, it's when people make other decisions for you. Yes. Now, as far as I'm concerned, with the amount of Haitians mm -hmm. that are here, right? Yes. They should be representative. Where they're at, that's on them. Mm -hmm. uh, you got enough El Salvadorians and mm -hmm. Spanish-speaking people. They should be represented in government, etc. But if they're not, hey, that's on them. Would you think it's tough to break in? You still got the old boy network here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of um, Kath, oh. African American woman who was up in Ward Seven, who was on. She was on the school committee, chair of the school committee. Do you remember her name? Oh my gosh. I'm, uh, You're having an old people she, moment. <laughs> I know, I am, I know, but she, she passed away recently. Um, do, you do you remember who that was? There was an African-American woman on the uh, school committee for many years, and then she stepped down. No. No, 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 she was, she was here in Somerville, and she was, you know, one of the few African-American women, or anybody, uh, not, you know, but yeah. anyway, so th there have been a few people over yeah. time. There definitely have. Yeah. Definitely that, have. And They've well representative, well represented on the police department. Mm -hmm. I'd say they probably need some on the fire department, but that's just my view. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is that is a big deal. I mean, I think one of the things that I observe is uh, that I wonder if my children can afford to live here. I don't think I could afford to live here if I was buying in now. Actually, someone asked me that on a panel discussion, uh -huh. and I said, "Who can afford to live here in five years?" <laughs> So it's, it's really, well, well, I and mean, what about taxes? I mean, your taxes must have gone up substantially over the years. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. 
But in terms of taxes and one thing, it's almost impossible for home ownership these days, mm -hmm. much less rent. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people have. So have you seen people that you know, uh, not you know, who are especially renters have to move out? Oh yeah, plenty, yeah. plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the graduating class of some of the high school, if I'm correct, was mm -hmm. 200, 200 people last year. Mm -hmm. That's that's a big drop. That is interesting. That's a big drop. That is interesting. That's probably the lowest it's been in decades. Right, yeah, because they can't afford to live here. That's interesting. That is interesting. I mean, the housing bubble's going to break sooner or later, but when, you know? Yeah, no, that is a great question. I always wonder that myself, uh, especially... It's it's just also the rents. I mean, the the uh, how, how, isn't there what they say the sky's the limit. What they got to hit the limit at some point. I yeah, mean, right, right. right. Yeah. You know, blood suckers and slave makers at a port. What do they care? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you. Okay. I appreciate Likewise. you spending time. Yep. Hi, my name is Ryan Lasala, and I came oh. to Somerville about. Would My you name is Sal, sorry. <laughs> this is Salvatore D'Amico. And uh, I came to Somerville about a year ago to take a job actually working in Davis Square. I work in the old Somerville Theater. Um, there's an office at the top. Yeah, and I'm, a, I'm the ghost that haunts it. I'm just taking a bodily form today, but typically I'm very ghastly and alarming. Uh, but I work in the Somerville Theater in a web design company called Oho Interactive, and sometimes later in the day when they turn the popcorn machines on, it smells like popcorn. You can sort of hear introductory music going on in the background. It's very eerie during client calls when you hear like a violin during like a Quentin Tarantino film. Like, my name is Akemi, I'm Brazilian, but I live in Japan now. I moved there a couple of years ago. And um, a year ago, I started working at 7-Eleven. And I really like to travel when I'm kind of self-talked in English. So I wanted to go to somewhere that I could use it. So I don't know, I saved money this past year. And just yesterday, I arrived. So I grew up with you know, a lot of American movies and American TV shows. That's how I learned English. And we always see, like, you know, for me, those stop signs are cool because it is something that I have always seen and it doesn't exist there. <laughs> so, so, you know, there are some things that we see a lot that, I don't know, normal stuff like those school yellow buses. <laughs> and for us it is amazing. you have to check out our bus. I took pictures of it. It is amazing. I love how here there is so much like art and diversity. Ron Newman, thank you for joining me right here at the table at Artbeat for Somerville Media Center. And we're collecting stories, and I know you have stories to tell. All right. Well, uh, I'm holding, I have here a Look at this. necklace with every dog tag that has ever been issued from Artbeat. <laughs> that starts in, let me see, it starts in... Okay, Henry, 1998. Is that 1998? 1998? Let's see. That's the very first one. 1998. Yep. And that was when we still had the Windows Art Project as part yes. of Art Do you remember that? Uh, yes, we knew each other then. Yeah. And I also have three buttons from earlier Art Feeds because they started doing dog tags in 1998, but before that, they would sell buttons like you have it, like you used to have at first night, where you, you'd, you'd buy the button and, and, and have, to, have to have that to walk around or get in. So I see this 1990 That's button, 1990. September 22nd, 1990. That's from 97. Oh, uh, July 27. That's and from 97. Yep, this, this is 97. Have a year, but I think it's 96. Oh, okay. Nope, yeah. it doesn't have a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Art Feet a long time ago used to be in September instead of in uh, July. In July. Okay. I don't remember when it changed. It was a long time ago. But yeah, this is one of the longest running. This is probably the longest run. Sorry. This is the longest running festival that I think we've had in Somerville as it was already going when I moved here. That, now, have you ever, you have volunteered and I been volunteer, part of this? I volunteer almost every year for this, except okay. when I'm out of town. Except when you're out of town. Which no, is, so. When what? When you like, go visit your mom? Yeah, when your I visited mom. my family once in August, I couldn't be here. So yeah. somebody else bought me a, one of these and gave it to me. I remember. Yeah. I remember. So, so tell us how you ended up in Somerville, Ron. Let me see. I ended up in Somerville, I think, let's see. 
my, it was my last year at MIT in 1979, and I didn't quite finish on time. I had to stay an extra summer, and a friend of mine who I had run with uh, at MIT uh, was renting a, a house on Hudson Street near the Armory, and so I stayed there for that last summer in 1979. Then I went to L.A. for five years, oh, okay. and then I came back and got a job working for MIT, and Jose was still in that apartment on Hudson Street, so I came back and, li <coughs> and lived with him again for a few months, decided that I liked Somerville, and eventually ended up renting an apartment on uh, Kent Street uh, in Ward 2 over, over near the Star Market. Okay. okay. And after eight years, I decided I, I wanted to upgrade a little bit, and I came today with Square. Okay. So I came here in 1992, which I remember well because I put a Bill Clinton uh, a sign outside my front window after moving in. <laughs> Did you put a Hillary sign out this year? I don't know if my landlord still wants signs, so I didn't do that. I, I, okay. I worked for Hillary. Uh, and, uh, went to New Hampshire a few times for her, and uh, we won New Hampshire, and that wasn't quite enough, unfortunately. No, it wasn't quite enough. Yeah. It wasn't quite enough. Yeah. But, you know, Ron, what do you love so much about Somerville? Uh, I like the mixture of the old things and the new things. Like, you know, for instance, here we have the Somerville Theater, uh, which was built, built in 1914. has been open pretty much all the time since then. You know, next to it we have Mr. Crepe, which has only been here a few years. Uh, and we have, um, let's see, we, um, and we like to reuse old things. So, for instance, where the Ames Envelope Company used to yes. be, now we've got the Aeronaut Brewery. Yeah. We got Brooklyn Boulders. We got Artisans Asylum. Is the city can or Canopy City over there That's as well? That's moved there also. I have yes. not visited that yet. Okay. But that used that that was over in your Citizens Bank. They've moved they moved over next to all that other cool stuff in Ward Two that I haven't been and I haven't been there yet. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah. Well, I want to share a story. Please this do. This is a story of when uh, Ron and I first met. It was at the Somerville Museum, and I, I had just moved to the Somerville area, and I had my bicycle, and I, I wanted some strawberries. And we had both finished a bike tour. I, I, it, I, was a summer, it was like right. a historic bike tour, and that was the end point. The Somerville and, Museum. And everybody else had left, and you hung around. And I said, I, you know what? I want some strawberries. And Ron says, I know where we can get some strawberries. Actually, I think you were the one who suggested I, Wilson no, Farm. No, I wanted to. I wanted strawberries. You knew where. And then we ended up getting on our bikes. He to took Lexington. me up the bike path, and there we went off yeah. to try to find some strawberries. Right. And we're riding down the bike path, and I kept saying, are we there yet? Right. Are we there yet? And then all of a sudden, Ron said, uh-oh. We went a quarter mile too far. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we had to turn around and go back about, <laughs> about three minutes. <laughs> Yeah, we had a Wilson Farm in Lexington. And it was awesome because we were there for the, the presentation of the largest strawberry shortcake. Remember okay. that? And then we ran into a friend of mine who actually brought our groceries home. And then Ron and I rode our bikes back I remember to Somerville. That. I forgot her right. name, but yes. Yes. Yeah. So thank you. But that was my first adventure with Ron, and I've been going out on bike rides with Ron ever since. Yeah. Hi, my name's Lars. Nice to meet you, Lars. Yeah, same here. So, um, how long have you lived in Somerville? I'm actually a recent convert to Somerville. I moved in February 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what brought you brought you to town? Uh, I, I've i always liked Somerville. Yeah. And prior to this, I was living in Medford, just over the Somerville line. Okay. So, pretty much Somerville. And prior to that, I was in Brighton, but I always came here because I had a lot of friends up in the area. Okay. Um, and we just ended up finding a really good place by... Um, by Assembly Row, uh, off-street parking, two bedrooms, perfect for awesome. what we're looking for. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And what do you like about Somerville besides your friends? Um, Somerville, is, there's, especially on the weekends, but pretty regularly, there's always something happening. Yeah. Um, and not just something happening, but there's always like interesting things happening. Um, it's kind of a weird place, which is a great weird. For example? For example, um, I have been to uh, a lot of the, the, they have like acapella groups that go around sometimes. Yeah. I've seen those. Um, I have been to, uh, like the free comic book day is actually really good here. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, they always have performances in Davis Square. Like I've seen martial arts teams here. I've seen um, uh, 
I've seen other pretty interesting performances. Yeah. And then um, the food is always fantastic. Yes, you know it they, is. They've got the movie theater that's right next to there, which is really, really cheap, which is the way I like to see a movie. Yeah. Um, but it, I've just always, I've, I've never had, so, I've never, I've never not had something to do when I was in the general area on the weekend. Yeah, that's great. It's yeah. a great city for the arts. Isn't yeah, it? absolutely. And for all interests. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Kevin with the Somerville Public Library. And what's your name? Sydney. And you live here now? Well, no, we're just visiting. But you said your mom was in school at Harvard. Yes. Well, how long is she going to be in school? Uh, about July, and only two more days until we leave. <laughs> two weeks till we leave. Two weeks, yeah. And you're, where are you from originally? Um, Lubbock, Texas. Texas. Our band um, sport is Texas Tech. Okay. And do you like Somerville? Yes. It's just that the thing that I don't like is that I wish Walmart was more closer. Walmart was closer. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a hardship. We Walmart. We have those in Texas. <clears throat> yeah. Um, they ours? have good toys there. That's why yeah. that. So. What do you like about Somerville? Well, what I like about it is that um, I like the movie theater. It's just that Mom won't let me see a horror movie, and I want to see one. She won't let you see a horror movie? Yeah, I want to see it. What's your problem? Well, the problem is that it's... <laughs> I can see that being a problem, yeah. Well, thank you, Sydney. It's been really nice to meet you. I'm Jean. And uh, how long have you lived in Somerville? I live in Somerville since 1980. Yeah, and where did you live before you came to this country? I'm from Haiti. Yeah, Port-au-Prince? Part of okay. Then I come in in this country uh, since 1963. Wow. Since Kennedy was died. Right okay. The day, right the months after Kennedy died. Okay. So uh, you lived in Somerville a while. Do you like it? I love Somerville. Yeah. Why is that? Because there's just always something on in David Square. Yeah. Because I love in David Square. By the way, my kids tell me I'm related to David Square. <laughs> every day I come into David Square. So I've heard you got a nickname. What is it? My nickname? Yeah, they call you the mother of David Square. <laughs> my daughter called me mother of David Square. Hi, I'm Chelsea. Nice to meet you. So I understand you're new to Somerville. Yes, I am. I love it. It's great here. Yeah? So <laughs> where'd you move here from? I actually moved here from Japan. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did. Okay. So, uh, and I was in Japan for about seven years. Okay. So it's a little, a little different. It's a little crazy. Does it seem uh, a little strange being back in the U.S. again? Yeah, it feels strange. I think primarily I'm from Connecticut. Uh huh. So I've returned to the states, but it's not Connecticut. I mean, it's close enough. But yeah. It feels like, I don't know. It feels like I'm like a time zone kind of. Yeah. yeah. So what do you like about Somerville? I like that it's very accessible by foot. I can go to the station. I yeah. Can go shopping, especially now, because mm -hmm. there's no way yes. that I'm mm -hmm. driving. But then when I can ride a bike, I do like all the bike streets and stuff too, so okay. I like that. Okay. I came back to Connecticut last year for my brother's wedding. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about pine trees and how in the summer all the pine needles fall to the ground and it yeah. smells so great. Right, so we were talking about that and I moved, go back to Japan. He sends me a pine scented candle like months down the line. And I was like, oh, I really want to go to New England. So I kind of Googled like progressive schools, okay. you know, charter like urban education schools. I got like one, the one that I'm working at now. And I was like, okay. I guess I'm going to Boston. I just applied, got accepted, and came. That's great. So I've never really lived here or been here before. So and all thanks to pine needles. And all thanks to pine needles. That's great. Summer pine needles, right? <laughs> and so far, you seem to love it here. Yeah, I'm really comfortable here. Okay. And Somerville, this is Somerville's 175th birthday this year. Happy birthday, Somerville. Come on, say it with more <laughs> spirit. Say it like you mean it. Happy birthday, Somerville. <laughs>